another tuning project this time a 6.2 liter ls engine in a vf commodore we're going to do inlet and exhaust mods see how we go Here's the engine. So it's still got the standard intake. We're going to be fitting an over the radiator intake on this one. It's already got uh, headers and high flow cats, but it's the standard exhaust system. So a bit of a strange exhaust combination, but this is what the customer wanted. Here's what the rest of the car looks like. Straight after this, let's go into our baseline runs with uh, original tune still in the, in the computer and uh, see how the vehicle performs. As the vehicle came, it was untuned, it was the stock programming in the computer. I baselined the car, so now I've put um, a basic tune in to do another power run, see how we go. Always gets me the traction control. Been doing this all this time, how many years, and you keep forgetting to turn the traction control off. I'm doing the runs on this car in fourth gear, which gives me a good speed range. I'm starting from somewhere around 70 k's an hour to going to nearly 180. I could probably try in fifth, but the speeds are going to really get up probably somewhere near 240 k an hour. I feel safer not speeding the car up so much, and this annoying thing is because I haven't got the seat belt on, so maybe let's pop that in. So you may be able to hear me a little bit better. I'm probably not going to edit this part of it out, it just makes it organic and realistic because this is what happens in real life. This is not some polished video of what goes on, this is events as they unfold, as they happen on the dyno. pretty good I've got my log going on the PC beside me so I'll stop and take a look 359 horsepower is where we're at with the vehicle as is without the uh, intake on now there are some differences between these two tunes here although it's minor so let's look at the differences and what's going on so power wise you can see that the green one which is um, it's got the start of the tune let's call it it's slightly superior in, in just a small area here and there. And if you look at the fuel mixtures, which is this bottom curve here. So I've got fuel mixtures on the side. So about 14 and a half and then coming to say 12 to 1 there. So you can see the stock run on the vehicle starts off fairly um, high here at 14 and a half to 1. And then it richens up to this point here. It's just under 12 to 1 air fuel ratio so the green one is where i've started to make some changes flattening out this fuel curve you can see here i've leaned off a little bit up there started tipping some fuel in there seeing how the vehicle uh, responds uh, and it does seem to be picking up a little bit of power you can see there the difference the green one's a little bit higher than the red between the curves so i'm gonna uh, continue tuning but before I do because it is going to take some time I'm just going to throw the inlet on now at least I've got an idea of where this one is going to be as far as peak power and what it is going to make I don't think that's going to change hell of a lot at this point so let's put the new intake on and see what we can get out of it we're part way through the installation of the intake so the factory in intake is off the radiator has been um, spaced backwards to fit the over the radiator intake which is going to slip over on top there so normally the radiator stands more vertical to make room it needs to to be spaced back you can see some of the brackets there and over on the other side 
Okay, so let's continue. This is the over the radiator intake now fitted. Now I'm not affiliated with this company, so I'm not getting paid to say good things about it. Uh, fiercely independent and I receive no special discounts for this, but I must say this is a very well made, well thought out over the radiator intake system. It is made by uh, VCM Australia. What I like about this one is the quality of fit and finish as well as the performance because in the way it fits, it fits like a factory unit with all these infill panels. It's got the block off plate here where the, the standard airbox has been removed. It's got this beautiful tidy appearance. You may remember the, um, the old setup. It, this actually looks more factory than, than the one it's replaced. So it comes with all these panels. Air flow meter is retained. It, it sits behind there. This is the finished product. Looks really good. Very happy with this kit. If you're being neat and not rushing it, it takes probably about an hour to fit. You need to trim a few bits and pieces here and there, but the end result's truly remarkable. Looks great. Okay, and looking through here, you may be able to see the uh, intake scoop. There is a uh, panel filter can and if you look through the gap there, but here we go. There's our um, filter inside there. The end result and how we've um, ended up with this intake kit. So we have put on about uh, oh, a little over 20 horsepower with intake and tune. I must say the tune part didn't really do a lot. Most of it was the intake, but tune did get it a bit tidier though. If you have a look at fuel mixtures, I was able to get the blue line a lot flatter than the uh, factory line, which is red. So I'm talking about the fuel mixture curve here. So if we look at the whole setup, we're still making, kind of taking the engine to 62, 6300, making peak power at about 6000. We're starting to run at about 2000, so nice smooth power curve. Uh, not a lot of difference down here, only slight, but as we keep getting above say three three and a half thousand at the business end yet yeah, you can see the difference opening up uh, one of the reasons why I think this is uh, due is because this intake seems to have less restriction I can see it from the uh, pressure inside the manifold from the manifold absolute pressure it is uh, two or three kPa higher uh, one might think that oh, is that because we've got a dirty air filter but I did check this vehicle no it was quite clean so it is a fair comparison with before and after once again, this isn't the first time this is happening. I, I quite consistently see about 20 horsepower gain um, from this setup, so quite impressed with this one once again. Okay, we're going for a quick test drive on the road now of the vehicle. I've got the parameters logging. What we're chasing now on the street is, as we change gears with the car, it feels like revs are hanging. It, it doesn't seem to follow the driver input so well, and this is something in the factory programming that it bothers me as well and it's been a complaint by the customer so see if we can um, look into that problem and make some improvements so what happened there Michael describe so as I've uh, put my foot on the clutch and taken my foot off the gas it's stayed at around 2000 rpm for that sort of half a second set with three quarters of a second there you go see that all right it doesn't decaying down so it doesn't come down so you, as if i had an excessive flywheel effect okay so we're, we're what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the engine to follow the the throttle input as closely as possible so when you've got your foot off you want the engine to return to idle as fast as possible okay we're on about the uh, fourth iteration of the tune trying to get the um revs to match the gearbox a bit nicer so what we've got it doing is instead of hanging the revs between gear changes we've got it returning back to idle a lot faster just so that it feels like it lands with the gears the way we feel it should so how's that feeling like to you now michael it feels a lot more like a natural flywheel now not, not, not like some artificial effect in the tune it feels like i take my foot off the gas during the shift and it starts to drop the revs with just the residual energy of the flywheel holding it up rather than a bit of injector pulse that shouldn't be there. And also on a downshift, rev matching is easier because as soon as I get off the throttle, it starts decelerating. So when I, when I engage the clutch um, to connect the engine back to the wheels on the downshift, it's decelerating as it should, not artificially having a bit of acceleration still built in it. So if you feel that, 
drop straight back down and we're in the next we're in the okay. no that, that that feels good to me as well and okay when we rev mash the d yeah. cell it's not that, pulling yeah. and then slowing now all of that feels good to me so I'll try now a little bit more okay. rpm now a bit more rpm there we go that felt pretty solid and it felt good about four four thousand especially it's a lot of punch here yeah. okay well, um, just to recap what's going on with the throttle again is let's say that we've got idle percentage of throttle 10% where we idle. So when we take the throttle to 20% and then we back off for a gear change, the time it took for it to go from 20% where we push the clutch in for a change back to 10% where it idles, it used to be good three or four seconds. It'd decay down very slowly. So now what we've done with the changes is uh, as soon as you the clutch take your foot off the accelerator for a gear change from 20% to 10% it goes down much faster a bit like an old school car but without taking out all of the the modern I guess touches from the uh, the engine again this is something that the factory programming has put into it that's probably what they felt majority of people would enjoy and prefer but I tend to like it the way we've got it now yeah I agree with you much better doesn't feel uh, artificial and that brings us to the end of our little episode with the Holden VF Commodore um, intake and tune. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you didn't like it, well, give it a thumbs down. If you did like it, though, yeah, give us a thumbs up. And perhaps you might want to consider subscribing if this is the sort of thing that you're into. If you'd like to see more of these, yeah, we'll be putting videos up like this one. Thank you.